One skill that we're going to need repeatedly in chemistry is the ability to balance chemical equations. When we do this, all we're really doing is following the law of conservation of mass, which says that we cannot create or destroy matter. So essentially what that means is that we need to end up with the same number of elements on each side of a balanced equation. We can't destroy atoms, we can't create atoms. There have to be the same number on each side. The way we do this is let's say we have a generic equation, A plus B goes to AB2, something like that. We're gonna count up the number of each element we have on both sides, and if we need to add more of something, we can add coefficients in front. So in this case, I have one A on both sides, but I only have one B on the left, and I have two Bs on the right. So I can add a coefficient in front of this one and give me two Bs on each side. So that's how we're gonna balance these. We're gonna add coefficients out front. So we can't change subscripts. I'm not allowed to change this and just turn it into a one because that changes what this compound is. So instead, the only thing I'm allowed to do are add these coefficients out front. And they have to go in front. I can't try and stick them in the middle. That's not allowed. The only other really, the only other real rule is that at the end, we should have the lowest whole number ratios possible. So if you balanced an equation and ended up with something like this, and you realize that all of your coefficients were divisible by the same number, in this case, two, it just means you probably took a longer road than you had to to balance the equation. But that's no big deal. You're just gonna divide each of your coefficients by that common number, in this case two, and simplify it to the lowest whole number ratios possible. So those are the three rules we need to follow for our, to, to get a good final result. As far as the procedure you use, there's a lot of different things people do. I try and keep it pretty simple and use three basic tips. Although sometimes you can balance just by looking at it or by inspection, which is what I did for that last one, most of the time I'm gonna make a list and that's gonna make my life easy. It just helps me keep track of what I have and what's changing as I add those coefficients. I also prefer to save the most complicated species for the very end. And when I say most complicated, this is the element that shows up most often. It's always easiest to just save this one for last and sometimes we'll find that it even fixes itself while I'm fixing the easier things. So I'm gonna put those in my pocket and save them for the very end. Finally, if we see that a polyatomic ion appears on both sides of a chemical equation, I can just count that as one big unit instead of breaking it up into its individual atoms. And that's gonna make my life a little easier as well. So let's look at a couple examples. We'll actually start with this one right here. So in this first equation, notice I leave spaces where I can add my coefficients. I'm gonna make a list and start counting. So I notice that I have the sulfate polyatomic, so I'm gonna count him as just one unit. While I do have a hydroxide on this side, I don't have one on the product side, so I'm gonna have to count those separately, separately as oxygen and hydrogen. So I'm gonna make a list of all the pieces I have. So I have hydrogen. I have SO4, which I'm gonna count as one big unit. I have sodium, I have oxygen, and then I'm already counting that hydrogen, right? So that hydrogen I'm already accounting for. So on the left side, I have two here plus one here. I have three hydrogens. I have one SO4 group. I have one sodium and I have one oxygen. On the right side, I have two hydrogens, I have one SO4, I have two sodiums, and then I have um, one oxygen. And again, I'm not counting this oxygen because I'm counting that as one big SO4 group, so I'm only paying attention to that oxygen right there. Now, as I look at these, if I had to pick a thing to save for last, in this case, it's going to be hydrogen. Hydrogen shows up in three different compounds, whereas SO4, sodium, and that lone oxygen only show up in two apiece. So hydrogen is my most complicated thing. I'm not gonna fix him until the very end, and that's probably gonna make my life easier. So I won't worry about hydrogen for now. Instead, I'm gonna worry about the other thing that doesn't work right now, which is sodium. So I have two on the right side and only one on the left side, so I need to add more to the left side. I always add more to the side that has less. So I can add a coefficient in front and to get two, I just put a two out front. 
Can I see that's a two? There. Two, there we go. So that's gonna give me two sodiums. Now it's also gonna ch change those oxygens and hydrogens. So if I look at this, I say, okay, now that's gonna cause me to have two oxygens, and it's gonna cause me to have four hydrogens, right? Because I have two here, now I have two hydrogens from here, so that's gonna give me four total. So I say, okay, I fixed the sodium, but I messed up my hydrogens and oxygens. I'm still gonna save the hydrogens for last. Now I'm just gonna worry about the oxygens. So on this side I have two, this side only have one. So to get it up to two, I just put a two right there. So that leaves me with two. And that changes this to four. Two times two gives me four. And now I look at it and say, oh, I'm done. I have four hydrogens, one sulfate, two sodiums, and two oxygens. So I'm done, and here's my final balanced chemical equation. Let's look at another example. This one only has two elements, nitrogen and hydrogen. So I'm gonna do the same thing, I'm gonna make my list. In this case, on the left side, I have two nitrogens and four hydrogens. And on the right side, I have one plus two gives me three nitrogens and three hydrogens. So again, I'm gonna look at it and decide who to save for last. Notice that hydrogen shows up in two places, whereas nitrogen shows up in three. So I'm not gonna worry about the nitrogen yet. If I do, that's gonna make my life too hard. I'm gonna start with the simpler one. I'm gonna start with the hydrogen. I have a four and a three. So there's no way I can change just one of these and make this work out. So instead, I'm gonna figure out how to get the least common multiple. So I have a four and a three, so all I'm gonna do really is swap those. If I put a three on this side and a four on this side, then this gives me 12 hydrogens on the left and 12 hydrogens on the right. So if you have two numbers that aren't divisible by anything, you just sort of figure out, okay, if I swap them, I'll give this side the three, that side the four, and now I have 12 on each side. Now, of course, that also changes my nitrogen. So now I have six nitrogens on the left, three times two. On the right, I have four plus two gives me six. And I say, oh, I guess I'm done. If I had started with the nitrogen, that would have been much much more complicated. I would have been trying to add different nitrogens, it would have made life really difficult, and it turns out all I really needed was that three and the four. So if you start with the simpler thing, it usually makes your life a lot easier.